is the Phantom 4 RTK worth it? Right now you can go on to Amazon.com and search up a Phantom 4 Pro and buy it for under $2,000. The best part is that you'll probably get this drone in one to two days, if not the same day. Now the Phantom 4 Pro comes in at a much more affordable rate than the Phantom 4 RTK. This RTK sensor right here makes the drone worth six to eight thousand dollars. And for many people, that's very expensive. Paying an extra four to six thousand dollars just to have an RTK enabled GNSS receiver, is it even worth it? Today, we're going to compare two sets of data. One data set collected by the drone using the consumer grade GNSS receiver, and the other data set will enable the RTK positioning and collect the data with RTK corrections. This comparison will allow us to see the accuracies of the raw imagery captured by a Phantom 4 Pro and a Phantom 4 RTK. For today's project, I want to map out the right of way of the street that I live on. We're going to start here on the cul-de-sac and go all the way down to the intersection where my street ends. I want to create a high accuracy aerial map of my street so I can properly create a right-of-way map with accurate information. Now I've set up six ground control points all along the road on both sides. These six points are going to be observed using an RTK enabled GNSS receiver that's going to give us a baseline coordinate for every point that we can compare our two data sets from our drone. Now georeferencing these control points would be the right thing to do because it would increase the level of accuracy for our project. However, I want to compare the raw data accuracy so these points are merely going to be checkpoints. By labeling these as checkpoints, these points will not influence our results. All right, let's begin by placing cones at our home point. We'll place the drone right down here and we'll power on the drone. All right, now I'm gonna power on the controller and we're gonna set up our job. Now the drone and the controller are both powered on and I'm gonna go to plan and I'm gonna select 2D photogrammetry. Here I have my house and my street that I want to do mapping work on. We'll start up here, down over here, all the way over to the cul-de-sac and we'll go up and I might bring this one down just a little bit and this one back and that way I can get all of the right of way mapped out. Over here on the side, I can change some of these settings. I'm gonna start with the flying height. I want the flying height to be 30 meters. The speed is at 2.3 meters per second, that's fine. We'll come down to advanced settings and we'll come over to the horizontal overlap and increase that to 80%. I'm gonna change the margins and make them just five meters. All right, this looks good. I'm gonna hit save and I'm gonna create a name for my job and I'm gonna call it, let's see if I can do this. Let me think here, is RTK worth it? Can I add a question mark? Let's try a question mark. We can. All right, and now we've created our job and we'll hit invoke. Now let me show you how you can go back and forth between having RTK positioning and turning it off and using just consumer grade GNSS. Up at the top here it says ready to go RTK and we wanna make sure that we're not doing any kind of RTK corrections. So I'm gonna to go to the three dots, I'm gonna select RTK and I'm gonna turn off aircraft RTK positioning. RTK signal lost, back to GNSS mode. And now at the corner here it just says ready to go GNSS, which means that that all of our images are going to be captured using the consumer grade GPS and not have any kind of RTK corrections. I'll go ahead and hit start, okay. It'll upload the mission and then we'll slide to execute. We see the drone flying its path. Take a look at the live view. Getting nice clear imagery of the street. Very nice. Now while the drone is up in the air, I wanted to take this opportunity to thank our sponsor for today's video, Brilliant.org. While flying drones and doing surveying is cool, you definitely want to make sure you still have those fundamental math principles sharpened because you're going to be using them in your career. Brilliant is a great place for young engineers to learn about different types of topics like differential equations or thermodynamics through their really user-friendly interface. They provide real-world examples and create an interactive environment that anyone can enjoy. The best part about Brilliant is it's really geared towards young engineering students and I think that that's extremely helpful Return for to home, RTH. Looks like our drone is coming back. Operation complete. Sweet. I like that. Well, drone's coming back. Um, 
Before I finish telling you about Brilliant, let's run this mission again, but this time we're going to enable the RTK positioning. To enable the RTK positioning, I'm going to click on the three dots, select RTK, and turn on aircraft RTK positioning. If we look over here, now it says ready to go RTK, and now every time we take a picture, it's going to take geotags with RTK corrections. I'll hit start, okay, it'll upload the mission again, and we'll slide to execute. Here you can see we are in flight RTK. Here's the current location and our live view. We can see the drone capturing very clear and crisp imagery, all in in flight RTK. Now, the best part about Brilliant is that it doesn't matter where your level of expertise is. They've got beginner level courses, advanced level courses, and they even go into engineering specific courses. Now, the first 200 users will get 20% off by using the link in the description and joining Brilliant.org. Alright, now we've got both set of data for our project, one with RTK corrections and one without, and now we're going to head back into the office and compare both data sets to see if RTK is worth it. Why, hello there. All right, so I've processed both sets of drone data. Data collected with the standard GNSS, like a Phantom 4 Pro would do, and the data collected with RTK corrections from a Phantom 4 RTK. The first project I've opened up is the standard GNSS project. This is the consumer grade GNSS, no RTK corrections. If I come up here, I can take a look at our images, and the geolocation accuracy is averaging about 1.3 meters in the horizontal, and almost three meters in the vertical. So that's about four feet in the horizontal and a little over 10 feet in the vertical. A lot of potential for error. Definitely gonna need some additional control to fix this data set. If I close out of this and I turn on the control points, you can see I have six checkpoints because I don't want any of these points to influence the data set. I merely want you to just see the differences between the measured and calculated coordinates of all the control points. And we'll start with point number Number one, which is right here in front of my house. Visually speaking, the green here is the calculated location and the cyan is the actual location. When I click on this, I'll zoom out. Yeah, you can see there's quite a bit of error there. The calculated error here is 3 tenths in easting, 2.7 feet in the northing, and a little under 7 tenths in elevation. So consumer grade GPS, we're finding 3 feet of error. The elevation actually came in closer than I thought it would but then again seven tenths is a really high number and uh, you would definitely still need to adjust that taking a look at point number two down over here it looks like we have three tenths in the easting 3.2 feet in the northing and half a foot in the elevation again pretty similar pattern here we're off about three feet definitely a big drift in the data set and uh, again you need to georeference these as ground control points point number three similar story we're off one foot in the easting three point three feet in the northing and about six tenths elevation yep still off quite a bit point number four again eight tenths in the easting 2.6 feet in the northing and 0.75 feet in the elevation point number five one foot in the easting 1.7 feet in the northing and almost an entire foot in the elevation finally point number six we've got seven tenths in the easting one and a half feet in the northing and eight tenths in elevation so when it comes to consumer grade GM you're going to be off about two to three feet and you're definitely going to need to use a lot of ground control points to adjust every aspect of your project. It's still doable and it's still manageable and for the price that you're paying, there's just a little bit more field work that you need to do. But this data is not completely wasted. You can adjust this data, you can make it accurate, and that drone is not completely useless. Before we get into the RTK data set, make sure you guys follow me on Instagram. I post a lot about my daily life, everyday flying drones or doing surveying or just what I ate for dinner. And I would love to interact with you over there, so make sure you guys check out my Instagram down in the description or just search up Rami to meet me. All right, now let's take a look at that data set with the RTK enabled, and let's find out how close our raw data is in comparison to the actual locations. This right here is the RTK data set. As you can see, it looks very similar, and that's because we're using the exact same drone, same camera, same specifications. The Phantom 4 is a Phantom 4, so regardless of which model you use, you're gonna get the same resolution. And because I flew these data sets like within a 
couple minutes of each other. There's only a slight change in the position of the sun and the cloud cover, um, but I promise you this is a separate data set. And to prove it to you, we'll go into the image properties. And if we look here, our horizontal accuracy and vertical accuracy are one hundredth of a meter in the horizontal and about two and a half hundredths in the elevation. So this is about three hundredths to six hundredths of a foot, which honestly, that's not too bad. Again, this is a drone that we're talking about, so I don't expect it to be like total station accuracy, but definitely a lot better than one to three meters. So I'll go ahead and close out of this and let's go ahead and turn on all of the control points. And again, let's start with point number one. And right off the bat, this was not geo-referenced. This is the raw data. This is the data that came out of the drone. I just geo-referenced it so that you guys can see the differences. When I click on point number one, you can see everything is right on top of itself. Very cool. And the errors are five thousandths in the easting, six thousandths in the northing, and about seven hundredths in elevation. Very impressive. This is amazing. I love that. Here is point number two. And it looks like we're pretty much right Right on in the easting, four hundredths in the northing, and only three hundredths in the elevation. This is amazing. This is coming in under five hundredths of a foot. So really, there's hardly any error in this point, and I'm very happy with that. Also, let's like talk about how there's a ton of trees in that area. I mean, that to be around all those trees and still get this kind of result is quite impressive. Point number three, which is going to be over here, we'll zoom into this. We've got three hundredths in the easting, one hundredth in the northing, and about one tenth in the elevation. So a little bit more error in the elevation, but I think a tenth is manageable. Again, this is not geo-reference. This is raw data. So if I were to geo-reference these points and actually use them as ground control points, then I would clean up that error. But to come in raw and only have a tenth of error, Nice, I like that. Point number four, I'm gonna select this. We've got six hundredths in easting, three hundredths in northing, and about six hundredths in elevation. Again, coming in really, really small, really, really nice, I like that. Point number five, down here at the end of the street. We've got four hundredths in easting, right on in the northing, and one tenth in elevation. I'm pretty happy with that a tenth. Not too worried about it because again, we would adjust that, but for raw data, that's pretty good. And coming over, to the last and final point. Got about eight hundredths in the easting, three hundredths in the northing, and right on in the elevation. I love it right on on the elevation. So is RTK worth it? Yes. As a surveyor, I 100% recommend everybody get a drone with RTK on it. If you're just doing general mapping work and you're not so concerned with accuracy, then the Phantom 4 Pro is probably sufficient enough and you can save yourself a couple thousand dollars. But if you're going to be doing high accuracy drone surveying or right of way mapping, then I highly recommend getting RTK because the RTK is just going to be one more thing that makes your data set that much more accurate. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you want to learn more about RTK drones, click on this video up at the top. If you're a beginner and you just want to learn more about drone surveying, then click on this video on the bottom and I'll see you guys next time.